Welcome to Let's Talk Investing, a co-production of the Globe and Mail and the Investor Education Fund. I'm Rob Carrick, personal finance columnist at the Globe and Mail, and with me is Leslie Scorgi. Leslie is the author of Rich by 30, A Young Adult's Guide to Financial Success. She's also the author of the upcoming Rich by 40. Leslie and I are going to talk about uh, financial tips for 20-somethings. Let's give, let's give 20-somethings the big picture, Leslie. Let's lay out sort of a, a roadmap to financial success. I've got a job, I'm in my early 20s, I've got some serious earning power, finally. How do I get rich by 30? Well, I like to suggest that these 20-somethings adopt a very balanced approach. So first off, they are saddled with a lot of debt in their early 20s. They're looking at a very, um, maybe a known future, and perhaps they have or have not had much financial literacy in their background. So the first thing I recommend is taking a balanced approach, which means spending your money very wisely. Second, saving and investing for your future at a minimum 10%. If not that, then try for 15. I always hear 10%. That's 10% of your take home pay, right? Or do you say, well, or do you say your gross pay? <laughs> Because that's a tall it, order. Yeah, it, the gross pay is definitely a tall order to fill. Something's better than nothing. So for a young person, I always recommend, you know, try that 10% of uh, whatever works for okay. you and then grow that over the time. I guess the point is to get into a regimented savings plan, right? Absolutely. And there's some studies that uh, suggest that if you save 15%, you'll actually become one in that 100 category of very wealthy people that have uh, been deemed self-made millionaires. Later okay. on. Now, the, um, the person who's getting new to investing and savings is going to be bombarded with ads for tax-free savings accounts, make a contribution to that. Registered retirement savings plans, make a contribution to that. Um, as they have kids, there's going to be RESPs. How do you balance those three programs? Um, well, first off, it's important to take care of yourself first. It's like being on an airplane. You put your, your mask on first before you put your child's mask on. So uh, absolutely have your RRSP on the go. Second to that is the TFSA. Consider the RSP like your fundamental elements of your outfit, your, your slacks and your jacket. And the accessories to your outfit would be the TFSA. Okay. You're going to get more bang for your buck out of the RRSP, though the TFSA does have a lot of curb appeal right now right. because it's new. Um, the limit of contribution is $5,000. And in an RSP, you're going to have more limit available. So. If I could recommend one thing, it would be if you're interested in both, do a two-third RRSP, one-third TFSA for your split. Okay, last question, Leslie. Home ownership, there's this compulsion people seem to have to get into the housing market. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know renting is bad. How do you, how do you, how do you begin saving for a house? Um, well, I actually recommend that you start tucking away a little bit of money um, as you go, you know, $100, $50, whatever it means to you. The TFSA is actually going to be a very good tool for that because you can grow your earnings or your savings and they're tax-free. Okay, so you throw your savings in your TFSA and that's your house savings account? Yep. Now, if you're not keen to do that, you can use a GIC or a money market mutual fund. But you're going safe, right? But safe. That's the key. Definitely be safe. Now, right now in the current interest rate environment, it is very attractive for first-time home buyers to get in. But always remember, do not make yourself house poor. Make sure that you can afford the payments that are going to potential, potentially bury you okay. <laughs> uh, later on. Okay. Thanks, Leslie. Thank you.